Hey guys, it's Leah Buckles from Prestige Worldwide Medical Consulting. I am a U.S. Army veteran and a physician assistant and former CMP examiner. So today I wanted to come on and do another video about obstructive sleep apnea, um, but this time I'm going to do it in relation to neck pain or cervical pathology. So there are a lot of ways that obstructive sleep apnea can be related to a veteran's service. Um, we've talked about several of these methods in the past. You can either be diagnosed on a primary basis as it relates to your service, if you were diagnosed in service, or if you had symptoms um, or evidence of, you know, witness snoring and things like that, um, apneic events in service, buddy statements that can attest to that. Um, you, and you can also be re, uh, rated for this and service connected for sleep apnea as it relates to a variety of secondary service connections um, or of secondary conditions. So one of the most common ones I get asked about is obstructive sleep apnea secondary to PTSD. Um, this is, we did, I've done other videos on that before, um, service connected uh, sleep apnea, service connected to other mental health conditions like depression, um, anxiety. Uh, related to orthopedic conditions with weight gain as an intermediate step or um, to a, basically any service-connected disability that can make you gain weight, right? So today I wanted to come on and specifically talk about obstructive sleep apnea and neck pain um, because this is one we see quite often as well, right? So what do we, what, first of all, what is obstructive sleep apnea? So obstructive sleep apnea is when, um, the upper airway collapses due to usually due to, um, mechanical stress or excess body tissue that will shut it down and not allow air to pass as it's supposed to. So when the air comes in, you will snore a ton, um, because it's trying to, um, get past your tongue that maybe collapsed back in the back, uh, back of your throat, um, things like that. So it's not to be confused with central sleep apnea, which is a different type of central sleep apnea. Um, we've talked about that in the past as well. But I just want to jump straight into OSA and neck pain, right? And talk about some of the literature that I use when I discuss this condition so that you guys can look these up and then you can perhaps go to your treating doctor and, and maybe have some of these journal articles um, be armed with them and highlight them and um, maybe show some of them to them and see if they agree with your opinion, right? So if a veteran is service-connected for a neck condition um, and they get diagnosed with obstructive sleep apnea, here are some of the articles that I discuss. Um, so let's see. Mm -hmm, um, okay. Sleep Apnea and Cervical Spine Pathology, published in 2014 in the European Spine Journal, reports that sleep apnea is multifactorial disease with a variety of identified causes. With its close proximity to the upper airway, the cervical spine and its associated pathologies can produce sleep apnea symptoms in selected populations. Single lesion pathologies of the cervical spine um, causing sleep apnea include osteochondromas, osteophytes, and um, other rare pathologies. Multifocal lesions include rheumatoid arthritis of the cervical spine and endogenous cervical fusions. Furthermore, occipital cervical misalignment, pre- and post-cervical fusion surgery may predispose patients to sleep apnea, biomechanical forces that may lead to collapse of the upper airway and subsequent sleep apnea have been divided into, into intraluminal and extraluminal forces. Extraluminal um, forces include cervical co column as well as the varying muscle and adipose tissue that support the pharyngeal wall. Although some of the pharyngeal musculature is attached to the vertebral column, the cervical spine provides mostly passive support. Biomechanical studies have accounted for other bony structures, such as the mandibular um, joint and a low-lying hyoid bone as influencing neck position and con um, consequent upper airway compromise during sleep. The cervical lesions have caused OSA by exerting pressure on the upper airway in the pharyngeal space. Often these patients additionally present with other symptoms of retropharyngeal compression, including dysphagia, right? So the article again was called Sleep Apnea and Cervical Spine Pathology. And um, it was published in 2014 in the European Spine Journal. I pretty much read off the, the part of that article that I find relevant and I list um, in my letters. Um, another one is called Alteration in Cervical Spine Mechanics in Obstructive Sleep Apnea Syndrome Patients, and that was uh, published in the Egyptian Journal of Chest Diseases and Tuberculosis in 2015. 
Another one, obstructive sleep apnea, cervical osteophytosis, and sudden death, a paradigmatic, paradynamic case and brief overview of the literature published in the Journal of Sleep and Sleep Disorder Research in 2016. I'll give you one or two more. I have I have several for this one. I think it's a really good case, right? Um, cervical spine hyperextension and altered postural respiratory coupling in patients with obstructive sleep apnea, published in Frontiers in Medicine in 2020. And lastly, um, head posture and upper cervical spine morphology in patients with OSA or with obstructive sleep apnea is from a book titled Sleep Apnea Recent Updates, published in 2017. So those are some really good articles for you guys to start with. You can go and look them up. Um, there's a lot of good literature in there. Again, I'm always happy to assist you guys with these types of opinions after I review the files. If, if you know, it looks like it's a good case based on what I review, other risk factors, et cetera. But these are some good articles that you can just go and print off and then, you know, perhaps bring to your primary doctor to see if they agree with, with this being maybe what's causing it, right? So you can, um, even just a short paragraph or two with a statement from your doctor saying that it's at least as likely as not related to your neck condition could be very helpful to you. Okay. So I hope this was helpful. Um, again, I'll go over the ratings really quick. I'm not an accredited agent or an, um, VSO or an attorney. Sometimes veterans like to, um, ask me this question. It's easily researchable. I know there's some, um, possible changes coming up in the future. So if you're watching this video and things have changed, I'm sorry, you got to go look it up again. Um, but right now, um, sleep apnea is generally rated at 50%. If it, if you require a CPAP machine or another device, like a mandibular device, um, it's rated at 30%. If you, and I'm, I'm going to pull up cause I forget what the next, if it's what the 70% is. Um, 30% if you just have hypersomnolence or um, daytime sleepiness, but you don't require a CPAP. Um, hang on one second. Most people I see are at 50%. I, I've seen it different before, but 90, 99% of the people I see are 50%. Okay, 100%. There's no 70%. 100% chronic respiratory failure with carbon dioxide retention um, requires a tracheostomy or has core pulmonal. Um, 0% is they have sleep disorder, but it's asymptomatic. Okay. So um, I guess that's it. If you believe that you have obstructive sleep apnea, you should probably go get checked out for it because it can cause a lot of problems with other body systems and you should definitely um, get that looked at. But I hope this was helpful to you guys and um, drop some comments if you, if you have other questions or things that you want me to talk about. I'm, I'm always happy to add it to the list. All right. Talk to you guys soon. Thanks.